Hello, everyone. How are you today? Good. Having a good day, I hope. Excellent. Good to see all the school kids here. We'll learn about crocodiles and how to stay safe. All right. Well. Welcome along to Lone Pine Class Sanctuary's crocodile presentation. My name's Frank. I've got the lovely Ellie somewhere here, hiding behind a tree. Uh, it's safety Ellie, so she's going to make sure everything goes just swimmingly. Uh, and this bloke over here, he is Wickham, and Wickham is our soap water for estuarine crocodile. Now, the first thing I'm going to say is that it's not Wickham's feeding day today. Okay, currently, during the winter and cooler months in Brisbane, we don't feed Wickham at all because he is a reptile and like all reptiles he gets his energy from the sun so on a, on a lovely day like today where we've got the big orange globe in the sky warming up his body he's going to spend his day just following the sun around his enclosure okay that's where he gets his energy from but his food just goes into making him bigger so he grows longer so at the moment we only feed Wickham during the warmer months so that means he won't have a bite to eat until maybe late October when it gets warm enough. You see, he likes to keep his body temperature up and around 27 to 30 degrees. It's not quite there today. So, if I offered him a piece of food, he'd probably eat it, because it isn't warm enough right now. Um, but as it cools down overnight, he won't be able to digest that food, and it could make him a bit crook. So, that's why it's not a feeding day today for Wickham. But don't worry about him. It doesn't bother him at all. Like I said, he doesn't get his energy from his food like you and I. And currently, in his present condition, I reckon Wickham could go for probably just over a year without eating a single bite to eat. Oh, that's amazing. So he doesn't need to eat every day. And this is how they operate out in the world. They're reptiles. They don't need to eat every day, every week, every month. They get one good feed, and then they go hunting again when they're hungry. And that could be, you know, in a couple of months' time. But Wickham here, he's 16 years old, 3.1 metres long. He looks pretty big, straight out there, but he's got a lot of growing to go yet. He will live up and over 100 years in age, and he will grow his entire life. Right, that means that he has the ability to almost double in length. You see, the saltwater crocodile is the largest reptile on the planet. The largest one ever recorded was just on seven metres long. Right, can you can imagine that. You know, another one of Wickham hanging off the back there, seven metres long, and go nearly all the way up to that concrete. Now at that size, they're up and over a thousand kilos. Their head's about this long. Their body sits about this high off the ground. He's just waving to everyone. There we go. And they are the top of the food chain. They're an apex predator. You see him stretching out his legs. He's so comfortable right now. He's just going to move and follow the sun around. Aren't you, buddy? Have a look at him as he moves, all right? Depending on how far he goes, not very far, all right? It's hard, it's hard to imagine, but that's almost as fast as what he gets, all right? On land, crocodiles aren't real quick. They're designed to live in and around the water. But crocodilians, which is the group of animals that Wickham belongs to, have been on this planet for 240 million years. Can you wrap your head around that? That means crocodilians were alive back in the time of the dinosaurs. And kids, this right here is our modern day dinosaur. The saltwater or estuarine crocodile pretty much stopped developing about 64 million years ago. And why did that happen? That happened because evolution decided that the saltwater crocodile is perfect. Perfect for what it needs to do. That's live in the water, camouflage in the water, hunt its prey from the water and at the water's edge. Everything about his body is designed to live in that environment. All right, if we start on the top of his body, you have a look from right up on top behind his eyes there, down along his back and along his tail, he's got all those bumps and lumps and scoots. They're called osteoderms or osteodermal plates. Right, and they're there for a couple of reasons. One is that they look gnarly. They're body armor. Underneath that skin is a, is a bony plate that is protection from being bitten by other crocodiles or being kicked by large prey items. Right? It's there to help them warm up. Yeah? So there's lots of, lots of blood vessels very close to the surface there. And that helps to warm his blood as he positions himself in the sun. Right? But more importantly, those scoots really, really help him move through the water. Okay? It's a part of his camouflage. We can see into the water here at Lone Pine, so that makes it really easy for us to see where Wickham is. 
Uh, in the environments where he is found, the water is not always this clear. It's often dark, murky, turbid, there's lots of sediment floating around, and you cannot see into the water. All of those scoots create currents and countercurrents as he swims through the water. So in water that's only just a little bit deeper than what his back is, he's able to move through there without disturbing the surface. So you will not see it because of those currents and countercurrents. And okay, that aids in his camouflage. All right, on the top of his head, he's got his eyes, his ears, and his nose. It's a little bit hard to see from up there, but later on when he moves around, you might be able to swing past and have a good close look. The eye on the tip of his nose, on his, on his snout there is his nasal disc, it's that little circle. He's got his eyes and his ears immediately behind that. Now they're all in one flat plane. That means that when he's in the water, he can keep his body concealed beneath the surface, and then he can just put those three points up above the top, and he can hear, see, and smell his environment. Okay? That means he can stay very, very concealed. But those three points that are up there, it's, it doesn't really look too different to leaves or sticks floating around in the water. And that helps him stay camouflaged from his prey arms. Uh, you can see his coloration, he's got all these blotches, blacks and golds and browns. That all helps for him to blend into the, to the bank of the river that he, that he might be in. Uh, and when, he's, when you're looking down into the water, those colours help him camouflage against the, the uh, base of the river there. Uh, and one thing that Wickham has, that not all other reptiles have, is he's, he's very, very intelligent. All right? The saltwater crocodile is an incredibly intelligent animal. He knows who I am, he knows who he is. Uh, he knows all of his keepers uh, very, very well. And how they use this out in the wild is that they watch, they learn, and they remember how their prey items behave. Right? Because he's a reptile, he doesn't have a lot of energy, so that means he's not going to go running and chasing his prey down. He really only has one shot at trying to capture it, and if that doesn't work, he has to wait until another opportunity uh, presents itself. So he's not a marathon runner, he's a sprinter. Right? So he needs to take the best opportunity he can. To do that, he waits and he waits. They're a very, very patient animal. Right? In the water is where they're designed to live. They hunt things like kangaroos, wallabies, feral pigs, you know, birds, all sorts of things. When they're fully grown, seven metres long, they have no issues catching a fully grown cow or a water buffalo. Right? Very, very powerful predators indeed. And out here on land, they're very slow. You can see, Half his body is that really, really long tail. Right? That's a solid muscle. On land, it acts as a giant handbag. So any person can really walk backwards faster on land than they can run forwards. Right? But you get him into the water, and the weight of that tail disappears. It's laterally compressed. It's like a big paddle. When he swishes it from side to side, he can propel himself through the water at about the cruising speed of the dog. So no person can outswim his own that way when it's in the water. Out here on Lambo, short little legs, great long tail, he's not going to run and chase you down. In the water, though, it's a completely different story. Now, the saltwater crocodile is found through all the, the northern parts of our country. So you go from about Rockhampton, north, around Cape York, through the Northern Territory, into Western Australia, down to a place called Broome, that's the type of environment in which you'll find a saltwater crocodile. They can be inland, they can be out in the ocean, they can be in a dam, a creek, a river. It doesn't really matter. Because one of the most misleading things that you'll hear about saltwater crocodiles is their name. Saltwater crocodile. Does that mean that this is saltwater? Absolutely not. Right, this is fresh water. You can fill your drink bottle up here, it'll be completely fine. He doesn't actually care what kind of water he lives in. To be honest, the majority of our saltwater crocodiles in the world tend to live in fresh water. And the reason that is, is because their prey drinks fresh water. You don't often see a mob of kangaroos go down to the beach to get a drink. Okay? So they're living in those freshwater environments because that's where their prey is. So they never make the mistake of going up into the northern parts of the country, tasting the water and going, yep, that's fresh, there's not going to be a saltwater crocodile yet, because that is absolutely not the case at all. I mean, reckon here, he wouldn't care if I filled this up with mineral water, right? So long as he can get into it, stay camouflaged, get all those features, that's all he really cares about, okay? Now, when it comes to hunting, they said he's a very, very patient animal. So he'll be out in the water, he'll be watching his prey items, only watching and learning where they come down to put some water's edge. Right? He's only going to get one chance to make that capture, so he's going to make, want to make it a good one. And so he uses his mind to do all that, then he puts himself into position 
towards the strike position where he pulls in very close to the bank, right? Kind of like what he's doing there, but in the water. And he sits there and he just waits. He's, he's a very, very patient animal. He has the ability of one breath to stay under the water for over five hours. You know? There's a record for a uh, little freshwater crocodile. And on one breath, it stayed under water for seven hours. Then it came out and walked three to four k's across land to the next next water hole. Right, that is absolutely amazing. Okay, so you've got to remember this when we talk about crocodile safety in a minute. Now you've got 240 million years of evolution to not be seen. Right, that's what they're made to do. Okay, so he sits and he waits. Now one of the most unique features that the saltwater crocodile has is his little organs called ISOs, uh, or integumentary sense organs. They're basically vibration receptors. All the little black dots, there's a lot of them up around his jaw, around the front part of his body, but they do go over every scale. And what they're there for is sensing vibration. So as people move around, or as, as players move around, they send out tiny little vibrations through the ground. And those ISOs can pick that up. That means that he can stay beneath the surface. He doesn't need to put his eyes up and he doesn't need to see his prey, he can feel it come down towards the water's edge. So as the prey item approaches the water, he can feel that and he just sits and waits. What is he waiting for? He's waiting for the animal to put its face in the water. That very last moment, that gives him the best opportunity to capture his prey. Once the surface of the water is broken, that's when they put on their strike. You've got 64 to 70 teeth, they're not overly sharp. Right? You could probably get one and jammed in your arm, it wouldn't break the surface. You combine it with 3,000 pounds per square inch of closing jaw pressure, and whatever goes in that mouth is not coming out. Right? That is a lot of grabbing and holding pressure. Right? So he grabs that prey item, drags it back down into the water, and then, uh, and then can proceeds to drown it. How far can he stretch out from the water's edge? This is really important. So that tail can propel him half his body length. That is considered the, the strike range of the saltwater crocodile. So for Lincoln, that's about a metre and a half. Right, so that's about this far. Anywhere within this range, you won't get out of the way. That strike is so fast that not even animals with much faster reflexes than you and I, kangaroos and pigs, can't get out of the way. You consider the largest crocodile at seven metres, you're looking at a four metre strike range. It's about this far. Right, anywhere within this